Hello, I'm Dr. Kim Duramo. Welcome to Mind Body TV. Is your job making you sick? I'm going to be sharing on this topic today, and it is something I think applies to everyone and we don't often think about. I did a Mind Body TV episode on this years back, but I'm going to approach it in a slightly different way today and go deeper with this topic and also share how this applies to everything you're doing in your life. Uh, so welcome to everyone who is here live. I would love to hear where you're tuning in from and I would love your questions, your comments. How does this land for you and what's coming up for you as you listen? We will be taking questions from the Mind Body TV episodes and making future uh, episodes and future videos to answer them. So welcome, where are you tuning in from? Hello. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am a physician sharing about how they can do to support your what may be going on if you're experiencing illness or disease and also how your system is meant to be creative, creating, actively uh, cultivating the circumstances, the people, the life situations that allow you to be most fully alive. And so what happens when you're in a job that's making you sick? If you don't love what you're doing and it's time for you to begin doing something else, you're either going to feel the inspiration of that higher calling oh wow, what would this be like? Maybe I could do this and start percolating in a higher frequency or, which happens for most of us, the opposite. We start feeling the desperation of, oh, I just can't get out of bed and do this again. In fact, most heart attacks happen in the early hours on Monday morning because there's something psychologically that like gets us through those next few days till the weekend. And then it's the disheartening, like negative low of, oh God, I gotta do it all again. I can't even bear to go through another week of this. Uh, so if you're involved in work, you don't love, it doesn't mean you're actively hating it, but it's just not what makes your heart sing. You may be starting to feel the desperation. Now it can be years for many of us where it's like, well, you know, you gotta work and you kind of discount that it's not awesome. And then time goes by, you're more tired, you're more overwhelmed, you're more exhausted and you kind of just normalize it. So we can push ourselves through doing something that isn't what's in our highest and best and just kind of like neutralize that. We shut down from listening to our inspiration. We start thinking, well, I mean, it's a job, you gotta make money and buying into the idea that we can't have something better or it's not available for us or I'm not good enough for that or I don't have the right degree or blah, 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 blah. But the truth is when we continue to live a life that is not who we truly are, it is extremely exhausting and depleting and it is extremely expensive energetically. And I'm going to show you what that means. So if you're not really feeling it or you're discounting it or you're like, well, it's not that bad, you're really going to begin to see what this is actually causing you. So how does this land for you? What are you doing in your job, in your career, in your work, or just your occupation of taking care of children, taking care of family, um, being involved with whatever, even if it's not a job situation, what are you occupied with each day that isn't making your heart sing? Okay, I'm first going to talk about what it's like when you do do what makes your heart sing. It doesn't have to come in all at once. You can sort of begin to percolate on it, make some small changes, and over time that snowballs and you end up more and more and more moving toward your heart's desire. You wake up in the morning excited about what's on your calendar for that day, excited about the meaning and the purpose of what you're involved with. So there's an energy lift and this is physiological. Your hormones will reflect it. Your immune system is strengthened. Your digestion is more, you know, you're de detoxifying and eliminating, you're absorbing nutrients. Everything in your body is going to reflect that state of inspiration of what you're most occupied with. 
So this feeds you. It actually gives you more energy than what you expend. So no matter what you're putting into your job or your work or your career, if you're in that inspired state with meaning, with purpose, doing what comes naturally to you and what you're naturally gifted at, you receive way more back than what you invest energetically in doing your job or your work. And I have experienced this personally, moving from working as an ER doctor full time, which began to get really exhausting. It was never my intention to stay there for life. And after a few years, I started realizing like, uh, something's gonna happen, right? Like, surely my path is gonna show up because this was never intended to be my rest of my life started to get really nervous because I didn't know what to do. I would have this feeling, and I actually wrote about this in my upcoming book called Be the Medicine, Your Three-Step Process for Instant Healing. That's gonna be coming out in 2024. Stay tuned for that. Uh, I wrote about this period of my life where I was in this desperation of knowing I'm exhausted, I'm depleted, I feel like I wanna die, please tell me this is not my life, there's something else. But it was this interesting space of wanting to take action. I'll go knock on doors, I'll rent an office space, I'll do anything. And knowing like, mm, that just doesn't feel right. There was something heavy about it. And each time I would be in that desperation and start thinking about taking those actions, I would 100% clearly feel, no Kim, let go. Be anxious for nothing, it is coming to you. And so it was clear as day. I would just kind of breathe into it. All right, well, I know that I know. Let me just kind of keep moving along. And it would be the same thing would hit. Oh my gosh, please get me out of here. I can't stand it anymore. And start thinking about renting office space or going to you know make this work. And it would just be clear as day. Let go, be still and know it is coming for you. And it was such a clear space of peace from my own inner guidance, I would let go. I would feel that peace and it would get me through the rest of the day. Uh, and it was within a period of just a couple of months, I got a phone call from a colleague. See, if you're on the channel of that ask, you're on the channel of the uh, the what if, right? I What if there's something else in store for me? Be, be still and know, follow that clarity and be on the channel of oh, what would that be like? In fact, in the Mind Body Toolkit, I'm gonna share here, there is an awesome exercise in my first book about this what if game, right? Like being in the energy of that new thing, the new job, career, uh, circumstance, relationship, whatever it may be, and then letting it lead you there because it will. What if I were doing what I really love and I was excited to get up every day and there was meaning and there was purpose. Get on the channel of that vibration and you will certainly have the guidance that leads you there. And that is exactly what happened to me. I'm gonna share the link for the book. It's drkimd.com forward slash book. But these are really practical, quick mind body tools you can practice anywhere, anytime to shift your frequency and consciousness. So within a short time, I got a call from a colleague and she was basically living my dream life or what I thought was my dream life. And I thought, oh, why didn't I do what she did? Why did I do my residency in ER? How am I going to make my life work? And she shared that one of our mutual colleagues had moved to Tennessee to start a new osteopathic medical school. And all of a sudden, ding, 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 bells and whistles started going off. I was living in Atlanta at the time. Tennessee was not very far. And I thought maybe I could get up there and be part of this. I'd done tons of teaching before. I knew they'd want me to be a part of the faculty. I knew a lot of the people who were involved. It was like, ding, 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 ding. So I came to find out it was five hours away, like four and a half hours away. It wasn't a hop, skip and a jump. I can drive up there a couple days a week. It was like, oh, you're gonna leave, you're gonna sell your house, sell, leave everything, leave your job and you're gonna move. And I immediately felt like, whoa, wait a minute. That doubt, that hesitation. Um, but I knew, I knew this is what I'm doing. And uh, when I got off the call, so I didn't even know how to contact this colleague. 
but I told my, my friend on the phone, oh yeah, I want to be involved. Two days later, I got a call from him who was starting the school and he said, what are we going to do to get you up here? And I was like, wait, it's how far away? And it's in the middle of nowhere. Um, but like I said, the clarity was there. So I ended up contacting a real estate agent before I even went up to interview because something in me knew, absolutely knew this is my next step. So you, follow, right? I don't know where I'm ultimately going or how this ultimately plays into the big picture, but I know the next step and I am a yes to that. So taking action, right? You don't have to be a hundred percent certain, just take some small action toward that. So the first thing is to percolate in the new frequency. What would it be like? to be doing what I love? What would it be like to be in a relationship I love? What would it be like to have that meaning and purpose and ease doing what I'm best at and being highly rewarded for that? Be in the energy of it and then follow the yes. That's actually another tool in the mind body toolkit. Say yes to your yeses. I have so many stories about when I said yes to the inspiration, even though it was like, how the heck am I going to do that? How on God's planet is that going to work out? Right? But that's the doubt, right? The part of you that's like, I don't know. I don't trust. The yes is more powerful than that doubter. The yes will show you the how. So say yes to your yes. And how do you do that? There can be a small action. Maybe it's the inspiration to make a phone call. Maybe it's you start learning and reading about something that really inspires you, that you really care about. Maybe you call up a friend who is in a, a job situation that he or she really loves and you just kind of feel into their energy because energy is contagious. Consciousness is contagious. Why is this so important? Because not only when you're doing and engaging in what you love, what you care about, having meaning and purpose, doing what comes easily for you that you're best at, does this feed you? But when you are um, avoiding that, like staying in the job you hate because you think I have to do this or I won't survive, I have to do this to make money, I have to do this to make my life work, there's nothing else available to me. You are slowly dying. <sighs> So people don't see the direct link to your health. Well, Lyme disease is caused by a pathogen. It's not caused from my job. Yes, but staying in a job or a relationship you don't love that depletes you, depletes your immune system. Your immune system cannot adequately clear away the pathogens so that you're strong, so that you're robust, so that you regain your health, so that you're no longer a host for that bacteria, virus, spirochete, or whatever the pathogen may be, and harboring that disease. So yes, Lyme disease is caused by this little spirochete, but your immune system is what determines whether it affects you or it does not affect you. Whether you harbor it for years and years, trying so hard, taking all the medications, and you still have this infection, or you clear it because that is how powerful your immune system is. Same thing with cancer, same thing with autoimmune disease, Hashimoto's, thyroid disease, same thing with chronic fatigue syndrome and brain fog, which I had experienced in the past. And it was like, what is going on here, right? How do I get rid of this? Who are you being every day? Because every day that you get up and you drag yourself consciously or unconsciously to do this thing that's not who you really are, that's not what your highest, your, you know, what is really available for you, your heart will only call you into your inspiration that is already available. Like it's not a pipe dream. So every day you spend ignoring that, avoiding that, suppressing that, it probably won't work you are expending way more energy than what you are getting back. You're operating at a negative deficit. So imagine if you quantify this as money and you've got like $100 in the bank and you get up in the morning and there's like $40 of dread. Oh, I don't even want to do this. How am I going to get myself? You know, but you get your coffee, you get your thing. You're like, I got this going, right? And then there's like $10 of crappy commute where you're like, oh, 
I don't want to be doing this. Why am I, you know, why it, but it's this belief, like I have to do this, right? So then it's like another $10 of the belief system. I have to, there's no other way for me. And you're operating on this negative belief system that also zaps your energy, right? So we've got $40 left in the bank account, right? So maybe then, you know, your pantyhose rip and you're like, ah, some little thing puts you over the edge, right? Because after maybe you're not, eating 100% the best, healthiest, most vibrantly rich foods, or maybe you're in a relationship that's kind of taxing and someone's like giving you a hard time, or maybe you're in, oh, even something like going into your drawer in the bathroom and it's messy and you're trying to sort through it. It's not cush, right? Everything in your life could be serving you, could be supporting you. That is expensive. It means you're like, oh, I can't find my blah, blah, blah. So everything in your life becomes very expensive. By the time you get out the door, you got like two bucks left in your bank account. Some guy cuts you off and you completely lose it. That is when you're operating in a negative deficit. And one of the biggest, most expensive pieces where we put our time, energy, and attention is in our work, career, job. It's a huge piece of where we either have fulfillment, we're fed, or the opposite, we are depleted. The second huge one is our primary relationships. I think this one's even more important. It's certainly been more important for me. And having had both, one, a really exhausting relationship that was like constantly depleting me, constantly having me have to be a bigger person, give more, and ultimately like just be exhausted. Thankfully, I left that relationship versus a relationship that feeds and nurtures me. Someone telling me, I love you. You're amazing. You can do it. I believe in you. I'm on board. I care about you. Who is honest with me, transparent, who is uh, interested in the intimate ongoings of my own being. So those are kind of the two main things because we put so much into our work career, not only time, but our energy, like it's a major, major factor of the day. So that's really why I wanted to speak about this today is we don't tend to realize how expensive it is when we're doing something that we don't love. We don't tend to realize that we're operating under a faulty and very energy depleting belief system that says, well, I have to do this. Well, I can't do anything else. Well, it's not possible for me. And every time we b believe that consciously or unconsciously, we literally change what the brain is able to see, what our eyes are able to see, what our brain is able to contemplate and perceive. That means someone in the next table over from us at the coffee shop could be having a conversation about some amazing opportunity and we won't even hear it. It could be the exact thing we're looking for. We literally, our brain will block it out and we won't hear it. Versus, like I said, right? What if, play the what if game. What if my life were so juicy, so fulfilling? I'm doing what I love to do and I'm best at. I'm being richly compensated. It's so fulfilling. There's meaning, there's purpose. It's making a difference in a way that I care about. And my work leaves time for me to be nurtured and pursue the other things that are very important to me. Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be amazing? Do you feel how that's a frequency? Can you feel the difference between that frequency and pff, what is this chipper blonde girl talking about? She pff, clearly doesn't know my life because I have to blah, 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 blah. And I can't blah, 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 right? The voice of the doubter. It's not about right and wrong. It's just a different frequency. And when you percolate in that higher frequency, it gets created in your life. You all of a sudden, hear that conversation in the coffee shop. Hey, wait a minute, what are you guys talking about? This sounds really interesting. And the reason that is a great example is I have a friend who just, um, life-changing opportunity that came into his life a few months ago, and now he's changed and or added to what he's doing in his career with this amazing project from someone he met in a coffee shop overhearing them talking about it. So it was like, this is amazing. What are you guys talking about? And he ended up getting involved with the project. So your brain is so 
um, selective at the information it lets in and the information it blocks out. So it's not a matter of, here's what's true, or whoa, this is what's true. It's a matter of what frequency are you operating on. When you're operating on the frequency of possibilities, you will have different thoughts, different ideas, and you will perceive and receive different information from the world around you. And that's why so many people will tell me, but I don't know what to do. It's not showing up. <laughs> yeah, so where are you functioning? Are you functioning in possibility? It's not showing up, but I'm open. Because that's where I had to be for like a long time, you guys. It was months of this agonizing, like, ah, thinking, will it work out? But then choosing, like, nope, be still and no. Let go of that fear. You're exactly where you need to be. You are in perfect timing. And having the wisdom and the guidance be clear, it will come to you. Your wisdom and guidance might be very different. It might be, go call your friend Pamela. <laughs> it might be, go walk in and leave your job right now. In fact, my friend Kyle Cease, we had this awesome event that he did a few weeks ago in Salt Lake City. And we are doing another one in June, so stay tuned for that. But his team at the end on the VIP day were discussing how did they get on this amazing team and get this incredible job that's like their life, you know, dream to do such amazing work. And for more than one of them, they quit, they had quit their existing job before they even knew this was on the horizon. They couldn't have known. There were like three of them who were kind of just following their own guidance of like, I know I need to leave my job. So when you have that knowing, I know it takes a lot of courage, especially when you don't see like, but what's going to happen? If it's coming from your truth, take action. Because I promise you, it's not going to let you fall on your butt. The universe is not going to guide you from inspiration and then say, <laughs> just kidding. True inspiration, you know, the yes is a package. It has within it the solutions embedded within it. But if you don't open it, you don't take the action. You don't start percolating. You don't take a step you won't have those solutions. You won't see those solutions because you haven't unleashed them. Action is what creates more possibility, right? Choice creates possibility. So are you stuck? And share this in the comments if that's you, like, well, I'm not gonna take any action because I don't know what to do. I don't know how it's gonna work out. Or I don't know what the action is, right? Just gotta get more connected with yourself with your heart. Because if you're living in white knuckle fight or flight, gotta make this work, you're not gonna hear it. You're not gonna see it. You're not gonna feel it and you're not gonna know. What kind of information is your nervous system registering? Are you on the treadmill of, I gotta keep going, right? And like I said, the faulty belief system of, there's no other way for this to work. Well, you're not gonna hear the guidance because it doesn't exist on that channel. Make time every day to listen. Make time, even if it's five minutes a day, to just sit and contemplate your nostrils. Breathe in, breathe out. Do nothing else. Like the powerful art of doing nothing, it is one of the most lucrative and productive things that you could ever do, especially if you're in a situation where you know where you are isn't working, but you don't know what to do. Right? What could it be? So start percolating in that higher frequency and consciousness every day, right? What if, play the what if game. What if it were easy? What if it did just fall in my lap and I either had the idea to make a phone call or I happened to run into somebody and what if I just let it be easy, right? Because that's a different channel. Uh, what if I'm doing something that's so meaningful, purposeful to me that I can't wait to get up? the next morning. I'm excited to get up. I'm filled with energy in anticipation of, of what I'm going to be involved with that day. What if I'm so well paid 
that I'm just like amazed I even get to do this work. What a blessing that I get to show up. What if it's so easy that it just comes so natural to me? I never even imagined this had so much value in the world. What if what I do has so much more value than I ever imagined? Just because it comes so easy to me doesn't mean it's not immensely valuable to someone else. So play that game, percolate with that, and then listen. Right? What would create that? What's one thing I could do today to move more, one step further in that direction? Because this is uh, really what is at the core of self-healing for so many people. They don't realize like the one big rock in their life, one of the biggest rocks in their life is just a huge energy suck. Anytime you are being but you're not, right? Like, well, it's okay. I can do it. It's all right. It's not that bad. But it's like your inner self is like, I'm dying. I can't stand it. I don't want to do this anymore. Right? There's a discrepancy. It's an energy suck. And it is a much more expensive one than you probably realize. One really great way to look at what is this actually costing me is blow it up. What if I'm still doing this 10 years from now? Where will I be mentally, emotionally? 10 years from now, I'm still doing exactly the same thing. For some people, that's enough. You immediately feel like, oh God, no. Where am I in my health 10 years from now if I keep doing the exactly same thing? Where's my body? Because when you're doing work that is not what you love, your body's gonna suffer. You're tired, you're, it's hard to exercise, you're not enjoying the people in your life. Uh, where am I 10 years from now in my money? Now, it may be you're like, oh, well, if I keep doing this, I'm going to have so much more money. But I want to talk about wealth, which is not really about money. It's about my lifestyle, my well-being, who I get to be. And if you haven't practiced that for 10 years, you've been practicing nose to the grindstone, I promise you 10 years from now, you're going to have far less wealth, even if you have a lot more money. Where am I in my well-being? Where am I in my relationship with my children, my spouse, myself, the people I care about? That's one way to really amplify it. If you think, oh, this is okay. I'm pulling it off. You don't realize how expensive it is. Blow it up. Now, flip that. What if I make a major change today and there's one action I could take right now and I take that step, whether it's calling a friend or reading a book or having a conversation or journaling, how do I really feel about my job? And just letting yourself swamp it out and be so honest, maybe in a way you haven't let yourself be because you're like, I should be positive. I'm afraid to see what's really there, right? Well, don't be afraid. What's really there? Because I promise you, either through your inspiration or your desperation, the heart which registers possibilities you may not yet be conscious of, registers higher possibilities, is letting you know. And there is something higher for you right here, right now, that you could step into today, that you could move toward. And maybe it's getting ready for you and you're gonna take some actions as you get ready for it. And it's a few months from now when it solidifies, but the actions you take right now are what allow it to manifest. So what is one action you could do right now, today, to amplify that? Is it looking online at people who are doing something they love? Even if you don't know, what would I be doing, right? Just an inspired person living their truth. Percolate with that. Let that into your cellular because it will begin to show you. Or you journal, oh, here's what my life would be like 10 years from now. And keep it general if you don't know the specifics. Maybe you don't know, like I did, um, that I'll be working in medicine, that I'll be assisting people with mind-body healing, that I'll be showing people the truth about how the body heals itself and allow global health, where we no longer are a society where we think we have to live with disease and that disease is part of our nature, that we actually allow a major global shift in our systems where we have a true healthcare system with individuals inspired to create and to contribute, right? That's where we're going. And I'm a part of creating that. And that is so exciting. So even if it's not specific for you though, it's general doing what I love to do and invest at. And I never even imagined 
I could create a career out of this. Or an occupation, I'm doing what I care about every day, right? Like it might not be like a job situation or career, it's like, what are you occupied with every day? I'm doing things I care about. I'm with people I love. I'm having a, a, a real meaning and a purpose every day. So journal about that. Do something. Maybe you make a phone call. Maybe you make a major change and you leave the job situation you're in because if that's what your heart is calling you to, I guarantee you that it's because there's something higher. And for those people I was talking about on Kyle's team, they all said if they had not made that step, they would have not been available to the position that following week when they got the job offer. There's no way you could mentally know, like there's no way Kyle's team knew, oh, she just left her job, let's call her up. And there's no way she could have known, let me leave my job today because I'm sure Kyle's team's gonna hire me next week. No, however, your heart registers this kind of intelligence. Your heart is registering that inspiration and it does know. And you can trust it and it will guide you and it will show you the path one by one by one step. So don't wait, open that space of your heart, what is possible, and think of one step you could take today and then take that action, share it here in the comments. And if you're just about to write, I don't know, pause on that, take a breath. What if you did know? What if you did know, because as soon as you let go, to what if, that's when the messages from the heart can land in the brain, right? When I'm in, I don't know, I don't know, I'm blocking them. As soon as I'm in what if, wonder, curiosity, receptivity, those messages, because there are several times more messages from the heart to the brain than the brain to like the whole system, right? The messages your heart is sending, there's so much more. And as soon as you let go, you're gonna hear them, you're gonna feel them, you're gonna sense them. Listen, what if I did know? What might it be? And then just take a stab at it because you're gonna be maybe two degrees off, but you'll refine it and refine it and refine it. The more you tune in, the more you listen, and the more you take the action. There is no wrong choice. Take that action today. I can't wait to hear what it is. Or just ask the question, what could I do? What would it be like? What if there was something? What if I listened and let it in? Percolate in that energy today because we are all ready to step into a new reality where we are being our true selves. We are living according to our heart, according to our inspiration, according to our true gifts, strengths, and talents. And that is the way we contribute to the world in the most powerful and meaningful ways. The world is starving for you to show up in your highest contribution. So don't wait. Your body is calling you, right? Your body is starving for you to begin to live this truth because it will feed you, it will nurture you, and it will feed the world. All right, lots of love to everyone here. I'm Dr. Kim Dramo. I'll be here each week with Mind Body TV. We're broadcasting live at 11 a.m. Mountain Time on Wednesday. We're in the Mind Body community in Facebook. If you're in Facebook, I invite you to the Mind Body community where our coaches are standing by to assist you with implementing this work for yourself, with answering questions, with being guided along our courses and programs to receive even more on your own trajectory to inner connection, to self-healing, and to powerful conscious creation. I'm on YouTube at Dr. Kim Daramo. Be sure you give the like and subscribe. Share this video with someone you love because this powerful work will change the world. I am so excited to see you next week. You can join us again. And if you're ready to go further into this work, our programs and courses are at drkimd.com. Sending you my love and I'll see you soon.